Hi everybody, this is Ted, and it's great to see y'all today. Let's get over to the lab and get started with today's experiment. In previous videos, I explained how color is important in identifying unknown chemical compounds. I also explained how turn-on fluorescence can tell scientists if a specific compound is present in a sample or not. However, sometimes forensic scientists need to try a different approach. Have you ever noticed that many solids that we encounter are white? Objects like salt and sugar and powders, a lot of these are white and you can't tell them apart very easily with just our eyes. Many other solids are black in color. Often this is due to the presence of carbon in them, but it's not necessarily the only reason why a solid may appear to be black. And of course, Many liquids look clear to the naked eye, not just water. And this leads us to today's question. What other kinds of testing can forensic scientists use to identify chemicals? One option is to use a technique known as Raman spectroscopy. No, I don't mean ramen noodles, although the words are similar. To perform Raman spectroscopy, you must shine a light with a narrow band of wavelengths at your chemical sample. When the light reaches your sample, it scatters light, and some of the original light changes its wavelength. This is the light that a Raman spectrometer looks for and uses to identify the chemical compound. Every chemical compound has a unique Raman signature, and its intensity is too weak for the human eye to see by itself. Many Raman spectrometers that are used in forensic settings have a handheld probe that you can point directly at any object to get a quick reading. Raman spectrometers typically rely on a laser because for one thing, it will increase the strength of the Raman signal. Oh, and you should never look directly into a laser when working in the lab. Earlier today, we collected Raman data from four different samples. As you can see, they have very different profiles. Once you have collected the data, you need to compare it against the Raman signatures of known chemical compounds. Can you imagine sitting at a desk late into the night and comparing your profile against all the known chemical compounds that have been previously tested by someone? That would require a lot of coffee. Fortunately, this step is normally automated, and for many chemicals, the compound can be identified as quickly as the data are collected. There are two additional advantages for using Raman spectroscopy in a forensic laboratory. First, very little sample preparation is needed. And second, because the identification process is automated, it is normally possible to identify all of the components in a complex mixture. That concludes today's lesson on testing forensic samples with Raman spectroscopy. From the lab, this is Ted signing off. I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>